Three reasons why Mitt Romney is likely to be the Republican nominee. Three reasons why Mitt Romney is not likely to be the Republican nominee. And should incumbent Congress people of both parties be worried this fall? I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters. Well, Susan, the big question, of course, on many election observers' minds is, is Romney going to win the nomination for the Republican Party? Now, we said at the outset three reasons why he may win, and one of them, I think, is that although he's not dominated in trial heat polling, poll after poll, month after month, he's generally been at or near the top of the list. So he's kind of like chugging along there, right, as people come and go, but he's always Romney up there. Uh, near the top of the list, which suggests he does have some staying power. You know, there's a second reason. We asked supporters, who's your second choice? Supporters of all the candidates. And the supporters for Herman Cain and Rick Perry both said they were inclined to, they were inclined to pick uh, Mitt Romney as their second choice if their candidate wasn't around. And that's very important. Newt Gingrich came in slightly below for both Kerry and Perry supporters, but they, it's not like Romney is total anathema. Uh, Kane, people who said I would vote for Kane, these are Republicans, and I would vote for Perry, came along and said, all right, Romney would be my second choice, at least more than anybody else. And the third reason is expectations. I always like these kinds of questions. We ask Republicans, regardless of whom you support, who do you think is going to be the nominee? And they, by three to one margin over anybody else, said it's going to be Mitt Romney. You know, there's some reasons, though, to think that Mitt Romney still has some hurdles ahead in claiming the nomination. And one is this score we call positive intensity, which measures how strongly uh, voters feel about the candidates. His positive intensity score is pretty anemic. It's at 10 now. That's about where, where it's been. You look at a candidate like Newt Gingrich, he's up to 17 now. And Herman Cain, who was in the stratosphere in terms of positive intensity, now in some decline, is also at 17. So much more favorably viewed in a strong way in an energetic way by Republican voters. Absolutely, and I think that's a real key indicator, one of the reasons we've been tracking it, because we asked Republicans who recognize the candidates, do you have a strongly favorable or a strongly unfavorable opinion and net the two out? And although most Republicans say, yeah, I have a favorable opinion of Romney, when our Gallup interviewers say, is that a strongly favorable? They say, no, it's not. They don't get excited like they have about Michelle Bachman. They did about Kane, but as you noted, he's been falling like a roller coaster that's reached its top and coming back down. And now Gingrich, who had fallen way down to low single digits, is back up to 17. He's tied for Kane with the highest. But again, Romney chugging along there pretty low at 10%. So although he may get the nomination, that would give me some pause because Republicans just aren't excited about him. You know, also you mentioned his steadiness in, in the polls, and that's certainly true. But steadiness also means he hasn't had that rise we've seen with other uh, with other candidates. He's His top standing in the Gallup uh, uh, horse race numbers has been 27%. That's not terrible, but it's not anywhere close to the level we would expect a nominee to be at within his own party. And by the way, that was back in June. He's not been close to that since that point. So uh, that's true. He's not to 30 or 40 percent. Republicans so far have not said, yeah, he's going to be our person we're going to vote for. And that leads to the third reason why we have some uh, pullback from that, and that is that other candidates keep jumping into a void. It's like, and you and other journalists keep reminding us of this, a, a, a band of Republicans are desperately looking for somebody other than Romney, right? It was Bachman and it was Kane, and now it looks like it's Newt Gingrich, and at least in the short term. And for a while it was Rick Perry. Mm -hmm. if, a, if an alternative to Romney could, could put together the support that the I am not Mitt Romney candidates have, they'd have a clear majority, but so far no one's been able to do that. So I guess the Romney campaign's holding out to say, let these people come and go, but ultimately we'll be the nominee. Well, slow and steady does mm -hmm. sometimes win the race. Yeah, and as I say before, if you ask Republicans, they think it'll be Mitt Romney, and maybe we should take them at uh, their word and give at least him the, the higher probability than anybody else. We mentioned Congress approval, 13%. That's pretty low. Isn't it 13%? Uh, it matches the historic low in the yeah, Gallup poll. Absolutely. It's as low as we've ever seen it since 1974 when we first started measuring. It was that low several months prior to this in October and in August and once before that, but that's just miserable. And I guess the question politically is, and you've been covering congressional politics for a long time, uh, what does that mean for uh, the control of the House and the Senate next fall? Well, it's not good news for incumbents on either side. Neither Republicans nor Democrats in Congress get high ratings uh, for how they're handling things. Um, so if you have an anti-incumbent kind of election, that could hit both parties. Now, historically in presidential election years, these waves that we've seen hit one party or the other, not both. Uh, but it's got to be a little worrisome for Republicans that they control one House of Congress 
and they are viewed in such a negative way. Again, Democrats and Republicans now are both equally sour on Congress, so it's not like Democrats love it and, and Republicans don't, but it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out uh, next fall. Also, one issue, uh, I guess I would call it our most interesting finding of the week, has to do with the health care plan, uh, the Affordable Care Act that was passed in early 2010. We just asked, haven't even released these data yet, do you think the Health Care Act should be repealed or not? Very simple question, not these three-part complex questions. Repealed or not, and by a five-point margin, Americans say 47 to 42, repeal the Health Care Act. Now, this is bad news for the Obama administration. It's his signature legislative initiative. He expended enormous political capital to get this law passed, and yet a plurality continued to say they want it repealed. The other thing that struck me about this data is how strongly people feel that they want it either uh, retained or repealed. We found 60 percent and more on both sides say it was extremely important to them that action be taken in the way they wanted either to retain the law or to repeal mm -hmm. it. Nobody is seems to be wishy-washy about the health care law. You know, that was a big issue among Republicans earlier on. We haven't heard as much about it since then, but given what we're seeing here, it's likely once the nominee is known that Republicans are going to bring it back up again. And by the way, one final point, our tracking of Americans' uh, health insurance. We ask every American, a thousand a night, do you have health insurance or not, shows that we see no uptick. In fact, we see a decrement in the percent of Americans who say they have health insurance. So, so far, it's hard for the Obama administration to say that the Affordable Health Care Act has had any positive impact on Americans, at least on that measure. We're going to hear more and more about this over the next year, the ways in which the Health Care Act has helped some Americans. For instance, letting parents keep kids on their health insurance until they're 26. I'm doing that with one of my kids now. And the ways in which it hasn't, for instance, people's concern continues about rising health care costs and about keeping the coverage they've had, say, with their employer. We'll monitor that very carefully. Well, we're getting closer and closer. We'll be back next week and talk about some new data on where the Republicans stand as this churning's going on in and around Mitt Romney on the GOP side of the ledger. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters.